Good evening aspirants. Welcome to Daily News Analysis by Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 8th November 2023. Displayed here are the list of topics we are going to see today. Now before we get into the discussion, I have two important announcements. Shankar IAS Academy's pre-storming test series. The batch 3 of pre-storming test series will begin on 16th November 2023. The first test will happen on 22nd November. So the link for both these two announcements are mentioned in the description. So make use of it. Now let us get into the discussion. Look at this editorial article. It talks about increasing area of cooperation between India and Bhutan. Recently, Bhutanese Prime Minister visited India and held bilateral talks with India. After this, a joint statement was made by Indian PM and Bhutanese King. This joint statement focuses on various projects between India and Bhutan. This includes completing surveys for Kokrajhar Gelipu Railway Link. Know that this will connect Bhutan to Assam. Gelipu is in Bhutan and Kokrajhar is in Assam. The other areas of cooperation include discussion on Bhutan to West Bengal Rail Link, upgrading checkpoints along India Bhutan border were also discussed. So, this is the crux of the news article. In this context, let us see India-Bhutan relation in our news analysis. We shall do this in our usual main sensor writing approach. Before getting into the discussion, let us look at the syllabus. In prelims, this discussion will fall under current events of international importance part and in mains, it comes under GS paper 2 under the topic of India and its neighborhood relations bilateral, regional and global groupings and agreements involving India are affecting India's interest. So this is all about the syllabus. Now look at the main question. It is a 10 mark question. India's relationship with Bhutan is often described as a special relationship. Examine the historical, strategic and socio-economic dimensions of India-Bhutan relationship. Here the directive word is examine. So this is a simple and straightforward question. We just have to examine India-Bhutan relationship in terms of historic, strategic and socio-economic dimensions. Also note that you need to give examples under each subheading to support each of your answer so that the credibility of our key points will increase. Now let us start with the introduction. Bhutan plays a significant role in India's foreign policy which is neighborhood first approach. The relationship between India and Bhutan is a unique and time-tested friendship. This special relationship between India and Bhutan is rooted in history, culture and shared values in regional stability. So in this way you can give a simple intro in two to three lines. Now coming to the body of the answer. So we can divide the body into three parts. In first part we are going to write about historic dimension and in the second part, we are going to write about strategic dimension. And in the third part, we shall see about socio-economic dimensions. Now first, let us take up the historical dimension between India and Bhutan. See, India and Bhutan have a deep-rooted historical relationship. During British colonial era, Bhutan maintained friendly relations with British India. In 1949, Bhutan signed Treaty of Friendship with India. This treaty marked the beginning of formal relationship between the two countries. This treaty acknowledges Bhutan's sovereignty and according to the treaty, India takes responsibility for defense and foreign affairs of Bhutan. Moreover, India and Bhutan have a close civilizational and cultural relationship that dates back to centuries. Culturally, Bhutan considers India as Gyagar, it means holy land. Bhutanese culture, religion and traditions have been influenced by India over centuries. The shared cultural heritage has strengthened the bonds between two nations. So naturally, a soft power diplomacy exists between India and Bhutan. So this is about the historical relationship between two countries. Now let us see the strategic relationship. India and Bhutan share a 600 km border which is least problematic one for India. Know that Bhutan is not just a neighbor for India but a very important strategic partner also because Bhutan acts as a buffer state between India and China. See, India has provided assistance in areas of defense, infrastructure and communication to Bhutan. 
India also plays a major role in maintaining Bhutan sovereignty and territorial integrity. Moreover, India has helped Bhutan strategically when it faced border threats from China. Take for example, in 2017, Doklam standoff between India and China. In this standoff, India helped Bhutan to resist the aggressiveness of China. To boost Bhutan's capacity, India deployed military training team. This will train Bhutanese security forces from 1961. India's Border Roads Organization has also built majority of roads in Bhutan under Project Dantak. This will play a major role not only in their development but also in the times of emergency security situations. So this is about the strategy cooperation between India and Bhutan. Now let us see the socio-economic cooperation between the two countries. India is consistently a top trading partner for Bhutan both as a import source and as a export destination. India accounts for about 80% of Bhutan's overall trade. The main area of cooperation between India and Bhutan is hydropower. Till date, Government of India has constructed four major hydroelectric power projects in Bhutan. India also acted as a responsible partner and a friend during the time of emergencies like COVID-19. For example, Bhutan was the first country to receive Covishield vaccines from India under Vaccine Maitri initiative. India is also planning to extend 2 billion rupees assistance to Gyalsang project which is Bhutanese skill development project. So this is the body of the answer. Here we have seen historic dimension, strategic dimension, socio-economic dimension. Now let us see the conclusion part. In conclusion, we can write a way forward approach for bilateral relations. For this question, you can write a conclusion like this. Firstly, initiating a trialogue with China, Bhutan and India can decrease the risk of future conflicts. Secondly, we can also diversify the area of cooperation like space tech, combating climate change, people to people contact. For example, we can increase the Bhutanese students in Indian universities. Thirdly, we can also use soft power like Buddhism to enhance the cooperation. Overall, Bhutan plays a key role in India's neighborhood first policy for a safe and developed South Asia. So in this way, you can provide a balanced conclusion. So this is all about the discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Look at this news article. Recently, a deep fake video of an actress went viral on social media platforms. In this backdrop, Union Ministry of Electronics and Information Technology sent notices to all social media intermediaries. The ministry highlighted that online impersonation is illegal under Information Technology Act 2000. So the ministry asks the social media intermediaries to make a reasonable efforts to identify deep fakes. So this is all about the news. In this discussion, let us understand about deep fakes and then about challenges associated with them. Let us start with the deep fakes. See, deep fakes are fake contents which are often in the form of images, audios or videos. Deep fakes are generated using a special kind of technology called deep learning. So that is why it got the name deep fake. Now what is this deep learning? See, deep learning is one of the methods in artificial intelligence. It teaches the computer to process data in a way like human brain does. For example, deep learning can teach computers to learn from certain real-time examples. This application of deep learning is only used to make deep fakes. Now coming back to the deep fakes, with the help of deep learning, the computer can learn and recognize the voices or pictures of targeted persons. After that, it will replace one person with another person in the video or audio. So this replaced version is called deep fakes. So basically deep fake can able to perform face swap, voice swap and content swap while speaking. Most of the time it is very difficult for us to distinguish between real and deep fake contents. Because of this advantage, deep fakes are often used to create discontent in society. So this is the basics of deep fakes. Now let us understand the challenges associated with deep fakes. Firstly, deep fake videos can be used to spread misinformation or fake news. As I said earlier, it is very difficult to distinguish between deep fakes and real content. So this results in spread of misinformation. Secondly, 
deep fakes can be used to defame an individual. Reports say that nearly 90% of deep fakes are targeted against women. Deep fake induced pornography is one such example. Thirdly, deep fakes can be used by non-state actors such as terrorists and insurgents to propagate their radical ideologies. This can cause anti-national sentiments among people. Sometimes it can also lead to security threats. Fourthly, deep fake can be used as a weapon to influence voters. During election times, a deep fake videos or audios can be used to create misconception against particular political party. So this can influence the voters during election. And finally, deep fake can be used as a blackmailing tool. By targeting the reputed family with the help of deep fakes, the antisocial elements can blackmail them to do monetary favors. So these are the important challenges associated with deep fakes. Now what can be done to keep a check on deep fakes in India? See, India doesn't have a separate legislation to deal with deep fakes. Currently, a very few provisions under Indian Penal Code and Information Technology Act 2000 can be invoked against deep fake cases. So India should enact a separate law to control the use of deep fakes. Apart from this, Indian government should launch a public awareness campaign regarding the use of deep fakes. The campaign should create awareness about misinformation that can be generated and transferred using deep fakes. In addition to this, deep fake detection mechanisms should be brought in by social media platforms. Mechanisms like automatic detection and immediate deletion of fake contents can be employed by social media platforms to keep a check on deep fakes. So this is all about the discussion. Here we have seen the basics of deep fakes, what are the important challenges associated with the deep fakes, and what can be done to check deep fakes. With this, we can move to the next topic. Look at this news article. It talks about underutilization of funds under PLI scheme, that is Production Linked Incentive Scheme. The article says that 80% of funds which were allocated for semiconductor industries under PLI scheme remain unused. So this is the crux of the news article. In our analysis, let us see about PLI scheme in detail. Production Linked Incentive Scheme is an Indian government initiative that aims to promote domestic manufacturing. It is part of Atmanirbar Bharat initiative that aims to make India a self-reliant country. The scheme was launched in 2020 as a part of national policy on electronics. Know that initially the scheme was targeted to three industries, mobile and allied component manufacturing, electrical component manufacturing and medical devices. Later, the scheme was extended to 14 sectors and the 14 sectors were given here, you can go through it. Know that the scheme will be implemented by concerned ministries or departments according to the industries that come under the scheme. Now what is the objective of the scheme? PLI scheme aims to reduce India's import dependence on China and other foreign countries by strengthening the supply chain of India. It aims to improve the labor intensive sectors and thereby increasing the employment in India. It also reduces the import bills and boosts up domestic production. Now what are the incentives provided under the scheme? The incentives were calculated on the basis of incremental sales. Now what is incremental sales? It means difference between the sales you made during the scheme period and the sales you would have made if there was no scheme during the same period. Know that this incentive which is calculated on the basis of incremental sales range from as low as 1% for electronic products and as high as 20% for manufacturing of critical products like medicines. Moreover, the unique feature of the scheme is it not only focuses on sales but also performance and local value addition done during the period of 5 years. Under the scheme, domestic and foreign companies can receive financial rewards for manufacturing in India. It is based on the percentage of their revenue for up to 5 years. So this is about the PLI scheme. Recently, Production Linked Incentive Scheme 2.0 was notified by government. The scheme proposes a financial incentive to boost domestic manufacturing in IT and hardware sector. So this is all about the discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Look at this article. 
Yesterday, Russia has formally withdrawn from the Treaty on Conventional Armed Forces in Europe, that is, CFE Treaty. This agreement was initially signed in 1990 after the fall of Berlin Wall. It sets limit on key categories of conventional military equipment in Europe and mandated the destruction of excess weaponry. Since Russia has pulled itself out of the treaty, NATO formally suspended the entire treaty operation. So this is the crux of the news article given here. In this context, let us quickly go through some important facts about NATO. See, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, also known as NATO, is a transatlantic alliance. It means the alliance of countries on the both sides of Atlantic Ocean. This alliance consists of like-minded North American and European countries. And it is the world's largest peacetime military alliance. Now let's have a brief discussion on the history of NATO. NATO was created in 1949 by United States, Canada and several Western European nations. This is to provide collective security against Soviet Union. Note that this NATO was the first peacetime military alliance that the United States entered outside the Western Hemisphere. See, after the destruction caused by Second World War, the nations of Europe struggled to rebuild their economies. Also, they struggled to ensure their security against Soviet Union. At that time, United States thought that Europe should become economically strong, rearmed and integrated. Because it is vital for US to prevent the communist expansion across the continent. So, all these factors led to the creation of NATO. In order to counter-attack the creation of NATO, Soviet Union started an organization called Warsaw Treaty Organization or Warsaw Pact. Talking about NATO's membership, it is open to any European state which can further the principles of NATO Treaty. NATO currently has 31 members. Very recently, in April 2023, Finland became the 31st member of NATO. Just go through the members of NATO. Note that all the decisions of NATO are taken by consensus. So it is an expression of collective will of all 31 member countries. Now let us see the purpose of NATO. Firstly, NATO promotes democratic values and enables the members to consult and cooperate on defense and security related issues. Secondly, NATO utilizes its military power to undertake crisis management operations when diplomatic efforts fail. So under NATO's collective defense, its military aspect comes into play. So this is all about NATO. In this discussion, we have seen important facts about the formation of NATO, member countries and its purpose. Now let us move to the next topic. Yesterday, a statue of Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj was unveiled in Kuparwa district. The statue was installed at Rashtriya Rifles Maratha Light Infantry Regiment in North Kashmir district. So this place shares border with Pakistan. So this is the news article given here. In this background, let us revise about Chhatrapati Shivaji Maharaj in prelims perspective. Shivaji was born on 19th February 1630 at Shivneri Fort in Pune district. His father Shahaji Bunsle was a Maratha general and his mother's name is Jija Bai. After death of his guardian Dadaji Kondadev, Shivaji assumed full charge in 1647. Shivaji has a long-standing hostility with the Bijapur Sultanate and Mughal Empire. He consistently raided Bijapur territories. So in 1659, the Sultan of Bijapur sent his general Afsal Khan to capture Shivaji. But Shivaji killed Afsal Khan and this led to a peace settlement between Sultan of Bijapur and Shivaji in 1662. Later, Sultan of Bijapur acknowledged Shivaji as an independent ruler of his conquered territories. So this is the first major victory of Shivaji as a ruler. In 1657, Shivaji raided Mughal territories near Ahmadnagar. Mughal Emperor Aurangzeb responded to the raids by sending Nasir Khan who defeated the forces of Shivaji at Ahmadnagar. Later in 1659, Shivaji defeated a large force of Bijapur army under Shaista Khan. 
In 1664, Shivaji raided wealthy Mughal port in Surat. So in retaliation, the battle of Purandar was fought between Mughals and Shivaji. This happened in 1665. Shivaji's troops were defeated by Mughals and Treaty of Purandar was signed. In this battle, the Aurangzeb's troops were represented by Raja Jai Singh I. As per the treaty, many forts were surrendered to Mughals and it was agreed that Shivaji would meet Aurangzeb at Agra. But when Shivaji went to meet the Mughal emperor in 1666, he was ill-treated and was taken as a prisoner. But he managed to escape and conquered all the forts which he surrendered to the Mughals. In 1670, he plundered Surat for second time. In 1674, Shivaji made Rai Garg as his capital and celebrated his coronation and also assumed the title Chhatrapati. Shortly after this, he made a great expedition into southern India and he conquered Jinji, Velur and many forts in Karnataka. Then he died at Rai Garg in 1680. In this short time, he founded the Maratha kingdom which dominated western India for more than a century. So this is a brief history about Maratha ruler Chhatrapati Shivaji. Now we shall move to the next topic. Take a look at this article from text and context page. This article talks about phasing out of MiG-21 fighter jets. So in this news article discussion, let us see some important facts about fighter jets in India. See fighter jets are primarily designed to maintain the control of skies by engaging and defeating enemy aircraft. They are equipped with advanced avionics, radar systems and weaponry to detect, track and engage with hostile aircrafts. One speciality about fighter jets is that they can attack targets in the air and as well as on the ground. India currently has more than 700 combat jets in air force and navy fleets. With this basic understanding, now let us see the types of fighter jets in India. First, let us take up the light combat aircraft LCA. LCA is indigenously developed multi-role fighter aircraft. It is often referred to as Tejas, which means radiant in Sanskrit. LCA is manufactured by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited, and there are multiple variants of LCA, including LCA Tejas Mark I, LCA Tejas Mark II, etc. There is also a naval variant called LCA Navy, which is developed for Indian Navy. LCA is designed for various combat roles including air defense, ground attack and maritime attacks. It can go up to maximum speed of Mach 1.8. So this is all about LCA. Now the second type is multi-role fighter aircraft MRFA. It is designed to perform various missions like air to air combat, air to ground attack and electronic warfare. Currently, Indian Air Force is procuring MRFA to replace the soviet era mig 21 here we should know about mig 21 it is soviet designed fighter aircraft that was first introduced in 1950s indian air force acquired mig 21 in 1963 and it played a crucial role during 1965 and 1971 wars with pakistan due to many accidents and crashes it is called flying coffin Currently Indian Air Force plans to phase out MiG-21 by 2024 and replace it with more modern fighters. Advanced Medium Combat Aircraft AMCA is an Indian program to develop fifth generation multi-role combat aircraft for Indian Air Force and Indian Navy. It is being designed and developed by Aeronautical Development Agency under DRDO in collaboration with Hindustan Aeronautic Limited. This was seen as a successor to Sukhoi 30 MKI. Here Sukhoi 30 is a twin engine multi-role aircraft developed by Russia and licensed by Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. Sukhoi can perform air attack, ground attack, electronic warfare and also maritime strike missions. It entered service with Indian Air Force in 2002 and has been deployed in several conflicts and exercises. So these are the major types of fighter aircrafts in India. Some other types include twin engine deck based fighter and Rafale aircrafts which were recently introduced into Indian Air Force. So this is all about the discussion. Now let us move to the next topic. Now we have come to the prelims practice question discussion. Look at the first question. It is about member countries of NATO. 
So we have to find which are the countries are members of NATO. Look at the first option. Germany, Turkey, Iceland, Finland. Yes, these are the member countries of NATO. Other three options are incorrect. See, Sweden is not a member country of NATO. Belarus is not a member of NATO. And Ukraine is not a member of NATO. So all the three options are incorrect. So the correct answer is option A. Note that recently Finland became a member of NATO. Now coming to the second question. Ashtapradhan was not a creation of Shivaji. Yes, this statement is correct. Under Shivaji, Ashtapradhan offices were neither hereditary nor permanent. And they held the office at the pleasure of king. Yes, this statement is also correct. Peshwa looked after the finances and general administration. This statement is also correct. So the correct answer is option C. All the three. So this is the main question for you today. Interested aspirants can write the answer and post it in the comment section. With this, we have come to the end of the discussion. If you like the video, please share it with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe to Shankara's YouTube channel. Thank you.